Hey guys, this is Matt and it's another beautiful day outside. So I'm gonna to try to get some more work done on the FD today. Everything is really just down to the last of the trim. Um, and then, you know, once I get the trim in, I can, you know, steering and get the cluster and all that stuff. But probably the biggest thing I have left that's more of a, a complicated issue is the e-brake cables. The one that's in my car works, but having been under the car, I do know that it's, um, it was another casualty of the fire that was in the car. So what I've done is I went ahead and secured a brand new cable. And so I've already got the car up on a lift and I just have it high enough that I could slide under. I have lifted it up already to take a look and see what's going on. So it's really just the cable that needs to come from the e-brake handle to it kind of splits off to the left and right side. So when you get this, you get the cable and you'll need to retain the nut from your the cable that you have in your car. and anybody that's doing this that's the part number so um, what i'm going to do is going to slide up underneath the car i suspect that really the only thing that holds this in is a clip or something that goes right here which has been burned off of my uh, cable that's on the car so i'm going to go ahead and slide under there show you where this is at see what tools i need and then we'll go ahead and get this replaced so i really hope i'll be able to film this because it's a little bit tight space um, so here's my cable kind of hanging down uh, up there is where it connects into um, the probably you see a little bit of daylight it's where it comes in through the uh, transmission tunnel and then that kind of connector thing in the center is of the screen is the cables now it doesn't look like there's anything holding mine in so if I can reach up in there which is really going to be a challenge I do know that this is probably something that would have required taking off the exhaust and possibly the power plant frame but I'm going to see if I can just wiggle some of this stuff off and uh, and go from there so I really can't film much of it, but just I'll check back in once I've got that off and then hopefully the new one just kind of pops back into place. So hopefully the camera can focus in on what I've done. It's probably not going to, but essentially what I had to do was pop the, what would be the right hand side cable out of its little bracket, which of course my camera is not going to focus on any of this because it's too close. Just take my word for it. If you pop the right hand side cable, out of its little bracket, then you can get enough room to twist and pop the right side cable out. And then after that, you can lift it and rotate it and pop it off the left hand cable. Now, mine had a lot of grime and crud on them and that's what made it a little bit difficult. If yours were, I'd probably spray this down with some sort of like PB blaster or something, but shake my word for it. I'll try to explain a little bit better once I'm out from underneath the car. This is the piece you're trying to take off. And of course, each end of the, uh, the cables that split off to the left and right rear uh, brakes, it just has a drum where that cable goes into. So your your goal is to slide it, the cable back out through this. Now, you have to basically rotate that cable because it's, it's going straight out. So you have to rotate it like 120 degrees in order to slide that off, which isn't that bad. And what I did was pulled this clip, which is right kind of next to this. You'll see where the two cables come in. They sit in a bracket and it's just this kind of clip pop this one out and then that gave enough room to slide at least the right hand drive cable out and then i could rotate it and with you know a screwdriver and my fingers and a long a long reach uh, pliers i was able to kind of wiggle that out again if mine weren't so cruddy they would have probably just slid right out so the other side was just as this it was exactly the same thing but now that you have this side free you can actually just rotate this whole unit and it pops out so hopefully that makes sense and again um, the cable is probably in decent shape but it is missing the sheathing and the grommet that holds it kind of about the midpoint and my and my grommet that went through the transmission tunnel is all burned up as well so i forget how much this was to replace like 20 bucks or something I'll, I'll put an annotation on the screen and a link down below but um really it's it was a uh, i should have done this when i was working on the rear end um, if you were replacing all of your cables you wouldn't have as much of a struggle because you could just take them all out you know this piece plus the two rear cables basically at the same time but if you're just replacing this section um, you got to have small hands or the right tools in order to pry this out but anyway i went ahead and packed some grease in the new one uh, right here hopefully that helps slide those in so now it's just putting it back in reverse and i'm hoping that that's a lot quicker I did finally get it connected and it was not something I would recommend anybody doing with the exhaust on, um, but I was able to do it. And I think I found out why my heat light's always on. Looks like the sensor's just been completely cut off. So um, that'll have to get addressed at some point in time. But for now, I'll just tuck it right there. And yeah, so 
with that in, we'll be able to go ahead and get the e-brake handle and the rest of the center console installed and keep on working on getting this interior buttoned up. Before I put them away, I figured I would at least show you what made this job possible. It wasn't a quick job, um, but you know, these long reach pliers and a long screwdriver, you can kind of get up in there and twist things around and get to where you need, you know, need to get everything angled. So anyway, uh, let's get back to the interior. So over the last couple days, I've had a few goodies come in the mail. Um, I tried my best to clean my rear brace uh, bar, but the, the, the vinyl um, wrap on it was just really beat up. And I don't know if it's part of the fire damage or just sun damage, but it's really dry and cracking and kind of falling apart. I painted it, I sanded it, I tried to do whatever I could. It got to the point where I was thinking I was just gonna wrap it, um, maybe find some nice black vinyl and rewrap it. And that's probably what I would have done next, but I went ahead and looked online and there was plenty of them available for sale. So I picked up a good one from a 1996 FD and this one is in really good shape and it actually came with the, um, the actual brackets that go to the down onto the strut. But I don't have the, my bar in my car did not have these little brackets for the privacy cover. And this one came with both of them in good shape. This one does have a small crack in it, but it feels really secure. So I'll keep my eye on it, and if it happens to break, then I can do a structural repair on that. But this one's in good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And then I also picked up a few little miscellaneous trim pieces I realized that I needed. And then this big box came as well. So let's go ahead and get that opened. My car did not come with any kind of privacy cover or tonneau cover, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the back. So I looked online and you can get them used, you know, anywhere from 200 to $300, depending on the condition and whether it's Bose or non Bose version. But I reached out to Ray Crow and he said he was able to get me one and it was a really good deal. So I went ahead and picked it up with shipping to my house. I paid like 230, $235 for it. So Ray, if you happen to see this, I appreciate it, man. This is brand spanking new. So it's going to be nice and minty for the back of the car. It didn't sound like they had a ton of these left. So if you're trying to find one for your car, you might want to try to go ahead and do that. Maybe there's some left in your region. These are starting to become very limited and I do see the prices on these going up even on the used ones. And then tied into that, um, the back hatch trim of my car did not have any of the hangers that go for the little straps that hold the cover, you know, kind of lift the cover up when you lift the hatch. These are readily available and I just picked them up for $2. I went ahead and picked up three so I had an extra one, but I'll get those installed in the trim when they go into the car. But for now I'm just going to set this aside. But I will go ahead and get this, uh, my new uh, bar installed. And I'll probably go ahead and do the e-brake just because at that point, that really is the only thing that needs to go in before the center console. So I might go ahead and put the e-brake handle in as well. I'll go get this bar installed and set these things off to the side. And then I'll come back in and we'll regroup and figure out what we need to do next. I went ahead and got that brace installed and the two strut covers. So everything is, I mean, it's awesome because a lot of this was loose and broken when I had the car, got the car originally. Last things I need to do back here, put in the spare tire, the spare tire cover and the carpet. My carpet has a little bit of a fray around the edges. So I need to actually take a look at that and see if I need to do some stitching or something to stop that. But otherwise the carpet looks really good and that'll just all bolt it, you know, that just pops in. It's pretty self-explanatory. I've got new clips to install it along the back of the bin. So that'll complete everything back here, except for the rear, um, the top, you know, trim, which I've just got to pop that back in. So no big deal. So moving back up here and I've already filmed this once and did not realize I had my, didn't have my microphone on. So, um, you know, the e-brake handle just pops in with these three 12 mil bolts. And then you just fish the cable that we ran up through the handle. And right now I just have it all kind of loosely, you know, fit. It'll need some final adjustments. And of course I've got my new um, sense, my parking brake sensor that I need to go ahead and get wired up. And I'll go ahead and mention it while I'm here that before I did any of this, I went ahead and cleaned the headliner just in case I found anything up there and it was real, relatively clean. So headliner's clean, the e-brake handle's in. So really the center console could go back in, but I, what I may do is just hold off on doing that till one of the last things at this point, so that we, if we have to make some adjustments to our wires or make some adjustments to the e-brake, all that can be done without taking all that back off. So I'll probably leave the center console off for the moment. I spent a little more time out here getting a few things buttoned up. Um, there were some wires that I had hanging down that I got tucked back up underneath the dash. There was part of the venting system 
that needed to be reattached underneath the dash. I should have done that before the dash went back in, but it's easy enough to do from uh, over here on the on the right hand side. And I, I may not have mentioned this before, but any of the exposed metal pieces, I did clean them up as good as I could with you know some Scotch Brite and sandpaper. And then instead of painting them because I didn't want to take them all the way out of the car or spray inside the car, I just coated everything with a rust preventative oil. Um, it's intended for long-term storage of, st of uh, like metal tools, but um, hopefully it'll give it some protection once it dries. Prevents all this rust from happening in the future. I did go ahead and hook up um, some of the wiring that I had that needed to go back into the ECU. And I did go ahead and hook up my hood release cable and everything worked fine before I took this apart. Now that I, I don't know if you can hear that clicking, I can't get the latch to release. So that's annoying, but I'll have to deal with that when I've got an extra set of hands that can help me mess with the, the latch at the same time, but no idea what's going on there. I know these are prone to failure, but it worked fine before I took this apart. I'm hoping it's just some grime or something that got into the latch uh, under the hood and that's what's stopping it from releasing, but definitely gonna have to deal with that before we get too far ahead. I think for now, I've got most everything. The, the steering wheel's not, or the steering column isn't completely installed. I'd have left it a little bit loose so that if we need to make some adjustments on some things, we can do that. But um, I think for now, I need to go back inside and see what parts that I've got in there that we can go ahead and work on and get ready to put in the car. I'm back here in my workshop and I went ahead and found the last little bit of pieces that I have to deal with uh, before we can finish up this interior rebuild. So um, really everything that's kind of there in the back, like the center console and some of that trim up there, that's all ready to go back in the car. Just I'm waiting to get that in after some of this other stuff goes in. But, you know, I've got some kick panels, um, some other little trim, like speaker, the center dash speaker, um, a grill is, is ready to go back in. I've got the clamshell for the steering column and the cluster I'm really not gonna do a whole lot with other than maybe fix the lighter and replace some of the lights in there. Um, I have some other mods I'm gonna do with that, but I don't wanna mess with that and introduce potentially new problems until I know everything else in the car is fine. So that'll probably be a whole separate thing later on. So the biggest thing I've got left to deal with is the bezel that goes around the head unit and uh, you know it has all the HVAC controls. But you know this is one of the only pieces I couldn't get the textured or I mean I found some online but by the time I paid for a used part mine's not in terrible condition. And I wanted to see what it would look like just doing some different techniques and getting this repainted. So this video is probably going to be long enough for today. I'll deal with this in the next one. And as always thank you guys for watching. If you like the content smash the like button consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. This is how it turned out. Now, it won't be exactly this shiny. I did come in with a little bit of um, interior cleaner and the back to black product just to see if I could match the sheen of some of the other trim that I had done. And it's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's pretty close.